Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're looking at a very recent viral video of a guy claiming to find some microplastics in McDonald's chicken nuggets. We're gonna investigate the veracity of this as well as looking at a bunch of research on microplastics in food, including chicken. And this really did spark a much overdue video on microplastics, so we're also going to be looking at all the interesting stuff, like how you can get exposed, whether or not there is a clinically relevant health hazard and on and on. And before we get to the Mick plastic, I have to mention that a couple videos back, some of you suggested that the Vivo Life discount for all of their amazing products was a little bit too low and they hear you and they have responded by raising it to 20% off your entire first order. So yeah but only for the month of May. Now to the microplastics. Does a Happy Meal come with a side of polyvinyl chloride? You're loving it. Anyway, I first have to mention some context here. Like what even are microplastics? And just really briefly, it's any plastic between 0 0.10 micrometers to five millimeters, which is almost a quarter of an inch. Like this little plastic bead in between my fingers actually would qualify as microplastics, but that's about as big as they get. But it's becoming increasingly clear that they are pervading the human body. And so a very, very recent study out of the Netherlands looked at blood samples of just people from the general public, and they found that 17 out of 22 of the people's blood had microplastics in them. Is that a representative sample? I don't know, but that's 75% of them, so. And you like double shots of espresso maybe? Well, to measure if that was actually plastic, they used a method called double shot pyrolysis gas chromatography slash mass spectrometry. I wanna see somebody try to order that at Starbucks. Like, yeah, I'll take the double shot pyrolysis gas chromatography mass spectrometry with oat milk. And as those researchers mentioned, and you may have heard before, we are also detecting microplastics in human placenta where you really don't want them. And we're talking about things like polystyrene, which is styrofoam. And I think it goes without saying that you wanna lower your exposure, but we will talk about potential health implications, whether this is something to worry about and the sources in a little bit, but I think you probably just wanna get to the chicken nugget video. This is the viral video with 14 million views on TikTok on the TikTok account, Microman. It's a microscopy channel that's generally looking at things like water bears and algae. And after hearing rumors of microplastics in chicken nuggets at McDonald's, he decided to go and check it out for himself. Here are some snippets of the video. Hi, can I get a four piece chicken nugget happy meal? And that's it. Are there really microplastics in McDonald's nuggets? Let's see if the rumors prove to be true. What's this? A strand of something odd. More with plastic. A lot more than I was expecting there to be. Doesn't seem like this should be in chicken, whatever it is. He also goes and checks out Wendy's chicken nuggets to see if it's the same and says that there are actually even more of these little blue fibers in there as well. Uh oh. What's this? A blue fiber. Here is some that was in the meat. They all had this blue color to them. And there seemed to be a lot more that were in the meat of the chicken, rather than on the crust. Now I don't think they're putting Smurfs through a tiny meat grinder, hopefully, but there were some concerns here of contamination as well as it just being faked. He claims that he did things kind of by the book. He didn't touch it against the table or anything like that. I got out a brand new blade and I am using sterile gloves with sterile tweezers. And obviously, this guy has some experience with hundreds of videos, and by no means is this scientifically valid in terms of a final conclusion. It's not a super rigorous study or anything like that, but could this be faked? Well, the reason that I think it probably is not faked is because we have seen several sources now post essentially the same thing. And probably more convincing to me than those previous videos is somebody who's not anonymous, this guy named Justice Dodson, who is a UC Davis pharmacy tech, who also found these same, also blue, synthetic microfibers, which he refers to as Mick microfibers. Now there's two more pieces of information that I think are also backing that these are microplastics here. One is just 
simply the way that they look. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. If you're looking at identification charts for natural versus synthetic fibers, for example, these very much appear to be synthetic or microplastic fibers. But what really kind of rang the bell in my head is that as somebody who's been vegan for over a decade and is always exposed to, you know, slaughterhouse footage they probably don't want to see. I was thinking of those line workers at the poultry slaughterhouse wearing various blue garb. In addition to just the use of blue equipment sort of ubiquitously for some reason in chicken slaughterhouse, I mean, even the conveyor belt in this picture is blue. I don't know why, maybe it calms them down because it's a horrible job. And I won't be surprised if after these videos, all of a sudden things are changing to white or something that is not as visible because there could be some perhaps white microplastics in these samples that we're just not seeing at all. Since we're talking about so much gross stuff here, I think we should take a break with some, some more pure food that has high level of quality control. I mean, Vivo Life here, they test regularly for heavy metals, which is awesome. They have a ton of amazing products that are delicious, like the one I tried last time. And I wanted to highlight a completely different one this time, the Vegan Multinutrient, which I think is geniusly formulated because a lot of times they're just throwing a just way too much of certain nutrients in things, like too much zinc can make you sick. However, they put the perfect amount of stuff in here. They have the basics like vitamin D, and B12, and then they also cover your bases with more obscure things like selenium and iodine and more. And once again, they're awesome enough of a company to literally look in the comment section of my video and go, oh, we need to give people a bigger discount because that's what they want. So you can just click in the description below and it will automatically be applied 20% off your entire order for your first order, only until the end of May though. And in case you just want to try it out, 30 day money back guarantee, you get the point. Let's just move right back into the chicken plastic. And we need to look at the research because I was surprised that there is actually quite a bit of research backing the idea that this person's actually finding microplastic in chicken nuggets. This is enough of a concern generally that the China Postdoctoral Science Foundation, which is connected to the Chinese government, funded a study highlighting a rapid test for microplastics in chicken. That should tell you something right there, but in terms of the peer-reviewed literature's first mention of this, as far as I could tell, it's this study in 2017, which claims to have the first evidence of transfer of plastic debris into chickens, and this is in the journal Nature, so very legit. The researchers absolutely found plastic, but fear not, only 16% of it was microplastics. The other 84% was slightly larger plastic, which would definitely be ground down in the chicken nugget making process. <laughs> anyway, they say though that they only found it in the gizzards and the feces of the chicken making you feel better, aren't I? And fun fact, quote, chicken gizzards are a popular food throughout the world. Are they in chicken nuggets though? It was hard to watch this video, but I watched it for you. And McDonald's claims that the body parts that they use do not include the gizzard. So that one could maybe be crossed off the list here. However, again, they found microplastics in the bird poop. And that brings me to PCRM, which highlights something you might already know. Bird poop often makes its way into chicken food products, as in what people eat. The USDA also agree that the presence of E. coli and other enteric or intestinal bacteria on meat or poultry products indicates that the bacteria is likely associated with the intestinal tract. But they say fecal contamination is really just a visible defect. You know, the little chunk of poop might just turn you off a little bit visually. <laughs> Anyway, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine did their own poo-poo poultry test back in 2011 and found that about half of them had that fecal bacteria in them. Fun with feces, but I got curious and was thinking, is it possible that these microplastics could make it into the muscle itself? And it is the case that it has been detected in animal muscle, in particular fish and shellfish muscle from this study. This poor little fish guy, this species, had about 20 pieces of microplastics in their muscle on average. So so yes, they are definitely finding plastic in Nemo, which is the official next sequel to Finding Nemo. 
And that brings me to what are the sources in general of microplastics that we're exposed to beyond chicken because generally people are talking about marine life being exposed to it. We've heard of the Pacific garbage patch or the Pacific gyre not the type of gyration we like. And that is emphasized by how sea salt has the highest level of microplastics in it than any of the other typical rock salts or anything like that. So that's one way it can get into food. And I just found this super recent study that came out that found that the plastic rope scraping on the ocean floor from fishing vessels creates approximately 300 tons of microplastic globally every year. So we have that horrible fact in addition to just the larger nets tangling up sea turtles, et cetera. And then we also just to this chart can see a variety of exposure pathways from just inhaling dust that has microfibers in it, as well as of course food. And you can pause to read more of that. And if you wanna lower your personal microplastics emissions, you can get one of those little laundry microplastics bag that prevents the fibers from going down the drain and out into wildlife areas. And I should probably do a whole nother video on more information like that, but we have to ask the big question, does any of this even really matter? Does a little bit of microplastics have any possibility of doing anything bad to you? Well, let's get into the research. From this study, quote, currently the toxicity of microplastics to humans is still speculative as there are no studies yet to confirm the toxic effects, but they also note the potential effects on human derived cells, including inflammation all the way to DNA damage. Don't want that. And as this paper on human cells mentions, even quote, lower concentrations of microplastics increase the level of genomic instability. That's, that's DNA. And as this paper mentions, microplastics may be involved in the disruption of immune function and neurotoxicity. So this is all fun stuff, but we don't have super solid data because this is all pretty new. I mean, we weren't even talking about microplastics 10 or 15 years ago. Another thing that microplastics do that is sketchy is that they can be quote, vectors or transfer agents for things like pharmaceuticals, also PCBs, which are persistent organic pollutants that you don't want in your body. They can endocrine disrupt, cause cancer, etc. The problem is we don't have a percentage pie chart breakdown of where all of the different microplastics are coming from. So I couldn't say that chicken nuggets are a major source or they're probably not a meaningful source at all. But I think it's fair to say that staying away from processed foods is going to lower your chance of getting exposed through food. But we need more studies on this. We need more data. All that being said, chicken nuggets are just gross. Not only are they just like a little chunk of ground up animal flesh, they also have you know, things like cholesterol. They have hydrogenated oil, which is like a heart bomb, a ton of preservatives, etc. And of course, they are super duper unhealthy for the poor little chicken that had to get killed to make the nugget. You get the point. However, finally, if we were to really verify that there are microplastics, we would have to do a study and I would design it by you know getting a bunch of different samples of nuggets from around the US, for example, then doing a sort of density count of how many of these fibers are there for like cubic centimeter, and then doing one of those actual like double shot pyrolysis measurements of whether or not they actually are plastic. However, there's a very good indication that they are just based off how they look their morphology. The fact that peer reviewed studies show finding microplastics in chicken, the fact that they're all blue strands. You can see all of these line workers wearing blue garb and this blue equipment, it's all blue. Anyway, I hope you learned as much as I did by looking into this topic. And finally, once again, you can get that 20% off your entire first order of Vivo Life products by clicking my link in the description below. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe and let me know what you think about this in the comments. You think this is legit or not? Anyway, see you next time.